a perfectly beautiful California day. Reaching for the stars? Well, the stars aren't out right now. Like many streets in LA, this sidewalk is old and cracked. Spit and chewing gum. Keep your hands to yourself. The Lucky Mini Mart. <laughs> With a name like that, they must sell lottery tickets. Grit from the city covers this building. If the advertising is any indication, this store sells a lot of beer. Cleaning it wouldn't help. Ah, cigarettes. A most worthwhile expenditure of one's finances. You don't work at the Lucky Mini Mart. Leave the sign. Everywhere you look, beer ads. Cleaning the window is pointless. Carrie, the box is jammed. The telephone is currently in use, detective. Yo, chill, man. I ain't the one. I ain't going for it. And I don't play like that. I ain't having it. Ain't no joke. Back up, Jack. This young man doesn't appear to have a day job. Yo, 5-0. You got some notion of taking me down? Excuse me, I'd like to talk to you. Chill, 5 -o. I'm conducting business. Five-o! Hey, what's up with that? You Hoppin' me? This man is not a department authorized paid informant. You don't hold a warrant for this man's arrest, detective? This man was at the crime scene last night. He's stinky and he needs a bath. Rethink your actions, Carrie. Got some spare change a fella can have. God bless you. You're very kind. You know, that kid, he, he was gonna be a ball player, man, the big leagues he was. You've offered enough assistance, any more change and he'd have enough for a cheap bottle of wine. I'm Detective Carey, LAPD. I saw you last night in the alley. Got some spare change a fella can have. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yeah, okay, sure. You were in the alley last night. I thought you might be able to tell me what you know about the murders. Yeah, it's just pop, pop, popping sound. You know, I don't know. Can you recall any unusual activity in the neighborhood last night? Any arguments or unfamiliar people? The, the cop was... He was dead. Could you be more explicit, sir? I, um... Uh, I didn't, um... Uh... Sir? Yeah? Uh... uh yeah, what? Well. 
The man asked for change, not paper. This person is not authorized to handle evidence. An unwise and unwarranted tactic, detective. Stop! This guy has been drinking. Drugs and alcohol don't mix. This guy is too drunk to drive. Keep the keys. Stop! This man has done nothing to warrant arrest. Sir, do you recognize the man in this photograph? Uh, the picture's all fuzzy. I don't see any guy. Sir, how about a candy bar? A little afternoon treat? I don't think so. I like to drink my lunch. Even the smallest detail can have meaning. Don't touch him, Carrie. Then you won't have to wear the gloves. Why would this man want a piece of chalk? He's not an artist. Now what would this man do with little baggies? This man does not retain evidence regarding your case. Stop! That would be assault in the first degree. A door is a door is a door, detective. I'm Detective Carey with the LAPD. Everybody know who you are. You big cop. Bring big trouble. Detective Carey, would you care to make a comment on Officer Hickman's murder? No comment. What are you doing? Hey! Not too smart, big policeman. You push go on TV. Oh, it, it wasn't like that. You see, she... Yeah, yeah, you say for others. I see TV. I see you in neighborhood last night. You not come but for a dead cop. A neon beer sign fills the window. You wash window? I don't pay. You do for free. Looking for an echo detective? The room's not big enough. High fat, low nutritional value. Often what one sees in these small convenience stores. Eat those and your cholesterol count would go through the roof, detective. Balloonie? You need doctor? The shelves are stocked with canned goods. Nothing unusual about that. Carrie, you don't need a grocery shop now. Hmm, uh... What you want? You know like selection? Amico Glue, industrial strength. You drug addict? I monitor glue. I want no more police trouble. You trouble policeman? No more glue. You have drug problem? Leave glue alone. You talking to me? I over here. These small stores often exploit the poor by selling cheap liquor. Unfortunately, it's not illegal. Detective, a stiff drink is not what you need. 
Talking to inanimate objects is a sign of stress, detective. Everywhere you go nowadays, there's a TV. You can't reach it, Carrie. Besides, it's on a remote. That Christie building is a real thorn in my side. She make you mad? Huh. Look like you make her mad, huh? TV work with clicker, not clapper. Boy's no good to turn on. The counter has a plethora of merchandise. Ah, lottery tickets. Fool's gold. The counter is grimy. It could use a good cleaning. Carrie, you have no time to read the paper. Hope you're not expecting a reply, Carrie. It's not forthcoming. The register looks as old as the store. Keep hands off money machine. The register responds to the sound of change, detective, not your voice. Fresh fruit is a rarity in these small convenience stores. Fresh fruit is a rarity in these small convenience stores. That apple for my friend, not for sale. You need doctor? Fruit no talk. You okay? She doesn't look very friendly. American men all same. Too forward. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay, you ask. I know you a cop. You said you saw me last night. Did you happen to see anything else? Anything out of the ordinary, such as different people or cars in the neighborhood? I already told police all I know. Well, if you think of anything, I'd appreciate hearing from you. Just call me at Parker Center. Ask for robbery homicide, Detective Carey. By the way, Miss Chi, did you know Bobby Washington? He was good boy. Always helped me for free. He good boy. He try and stay away from gangs. No trouble. Bobby, good boy. Is there anything else you could tell me about Bobby, Miss Chi? What to tell? Boys either good or bad. Good boy. I was wondering if you remembered anything more about last night's events? I run business. No time to run around and do your job too. You want to buy something? Can you tell me your name and what your position is here? I own a Lucky Mini Mart. I work hard for my store. My name is Kim Chi. You've already recorded the information. What would shocking this woman accomplish, detective? What you do with that? You want hardware store. Amico Industrial Strength Glue. The canister is metal. You want? You pay. Look, you're not broken. Maybe a little tired, but not broken. This is an innocent citizen, carry. Put the piece away. I know pharmacists. You see Freddy on Sierra Street. We no make keys here. Showing off your equipment is aggressive and unnecessary, detective. Do you recognize the man in this picture? He shop here sometimes. 
This is the murdered policeman who was found in the alley. Do you remember when you last saw him? He police? Nah, he woke at Rainbow. Cook. No, ma'am, he was a police officer. Do you remember when you last saw him? No, maybe a couple of days. Not everyone or everything appreciates the art of photography. You sweet on me? I have husband. You steal from me? You pay. No steal. You try cheat me, you pay more. You smart, you know a goodbye when you see it. You shop here again. No make change, what you buy. Apples are nutritious and a good source of vitamin C. The apple is smooth to the touch. No exchange. There's no time for a snack here, detective. You have a case to solve. Telecommunications, a modern convenience. There's no dial tone and no change in the coin return. Useless. Sir, would you care for an apple? Apples are very nutritious. I don't think so. Unless I could drink it. This is a broken man. However, he needs alcohol counseling, not a canister of glue. Thank you, detective, but I don't take handouts. I don't need anything fixed but a broken heart, detective. You can keep your glue. I've seen enough violence. I don't need to see any more bullets. What kind of gesture is that towards a small child? She probably has a big jar of paste at home. Forget the glue. Would you and your doll like an apple? Thank you. You attach your Parker Center ID to your suit. Uh, no thanks, detective. I brought my lunch. Oh, it's good you've invested in a Kevlar, detective. You never know when the situation will call for one. That looks like it needs to be checked in or something, detective.
you press the button to call the elevator. You select the third floor as your destination. Come in. Not now, Carrie. Later. Why, yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I understand, sir. But we're doing our best. Yes, sir. I understand. I disagree, sir. Oh, well, of course. What have you got there, Carrie? Turn it in for ballistics testing if you think it's something. Hate to be blunt, old fellow, but leave. This is an important call. Lieutenant Block has a desk job. He really doesn't require a Kevlar vest. Yes, Chief. Yes, sir. We appreciate the support. Uh-huh. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Have you turned into Mr. Fix-It? I don't need a Valium. I'm not stressed out. I understand. I found these at Hickman's house. You think maybe he was abusing? Don't ask me. How the hell should I know? What are you trying to do, Junior? Make me healthy? Ha! You need that on the streets nowadays, Junior. What are you showing that to me for? I ain't no scientist. What do I look like, Junior? You errand boy? Book it in yourself. You call the elevator. You select the basement as your destination. Hello, Detective. How can I help you? Chester, I pulled these from a cinder block wall not far from the alley in the 77th Street area. I'd like ballistics run on them. I'd like to comply, Detective. However, they need to be processed first. Take them to Teddy with the appropriate paperwork and I'll get right on it. Detective, unless you need that analyzed, please remove it from my counter. 
I'm not a big fan of fruit. Chester, I'd like you to take a look at this and see if you can match it to the glue found in Hickman's eyes. I purchased it in the neighborhood where Hickman was found. I know it's a long shot. Hold on, detective. I only need a sample. Detective, I already have a sample. Believe me, I don't need any more than I already have. Chester, I found these at Hickman's. Apparently he was taking them regularly. Could he have overdosed on these things? Detective, these are Valium, 5 milligrams. Hickman weighed, what would you say, 170 pounds? Hickman would have to have taken what's left in this bottle and coupled it with something else to have killed himself. No, these didn't have anything to do with his death. Detective, you've shown these to me before, and I've already told you that I do not believe these could possibly have played a part in Hickman's death. See you later, Detective Carey. Pressing the button, you call the elevator. Fourth floor is your destination. Detective Carey, hello, sir. Detective Carey, how would you like these handled? I'd like a ballistics check run on them. Freezing ammo is something I've never heard of before, Detective. Are you sure? That sounds strange to me. Refrigerate these? If you want a ballistics test, refrigeration is unnecessary, sir. I'll write up the paperwork for the ballistics test. Then they'll be shelf stored if you need them in the future for trial, sir. I'll have this filled out in a second, sir. Sir, you should keep this with you. You never know when the situation will arise that you need it. Sir, is this related to a crime or a criminal? It's just a hunch on my part, Baker. I want a test run to see if it matches with the glue found on the victims in my investigation. Well, sir, I can't book it into property. Why don't you run it by Chester? She can take a sample, run all the tests you want. Sir, is this related to a crime? No. Well, sir, then I can't process it. Detective, are these from a crime scene or used in the commission of a crime? No, Baker, I found them at Hickman's house. I thought maybe they could be tested to see if they match in any way to Hickman's toxicology report. If they're not crime related, I can't help you. But what about Chester? She can process them. Pressing the button, you call the elevator. Select the third floor as your destination.
Junior, that ringing's getting on my nerves. Answer the damn phone. Hello, Robbery Homicide. This is Detective Carey. May I help you? Yo, baby, what's up? Be emo. You be wanting a piece of the straight action, huh? I got the news for you. I know some straight up talk. Yo, baby, yo, you hear me talking? Yes, emo, I'm here. Are you telling me that you have information concerning last night's murders? Straight up, baby. I be waiting by the field if you be interested. <laughs> You take a 3.14 follow-up report form out of your desk drawer. You call the elevator. Destination. makes for excellent cover. To attempt to enter your vehicle and drive away will surely result in death. Take cover and defend your position. Quiet! Don't give your cover away! He's an undercover cop. It must be Lieutenant Jim Veraz. Don't move. You'll lose your cover. Keep quiet, don't give your position away. The building is providing cover for thugs with automatic weapons. Don't move detective, keep your cover. Quiet, don't give your position away. The Rainbow Cafe is an undercover location for crash. Stay your position, leave the cover of your car and death will follow. That should provide some protection. You exchange a full clip for the empty clip. The street looks like a battlefield. You're hit. Lucky it's only a graze. You can't reach your trunk from here. This is your Ithaca 12 gauge pump shotgun. The shotgun is locked. You unlock the shotgun carry. Department issued Ithaca 12 gauge shotgun. 
There's nothing like the feel of a 12 gauge shotgun. Department issued 12 gauge shotgun shells. Handle all ammunition with extreme care. So what's it gonna be, Carrie? You gonna act like a pro or a spoiled brat? Have I made a mistake in assigning you a lead investigator on this case? No, sir, I... I'll have you know I've had dozens of calls this morning on you shoving that reporter yesterday. Everybody in town, from the chief to the mayor to outraged Joe Citizen saw you push her. Damn, you were all over the news. Lieutenant, it wasn't... Besides you appearing uncooperative, you were downright politically incorrect. You shove one more reporter, and the department's gonna get slapped with a civil suit. Shoving anybody else, and I'm gonna give you the boot myself. Lieutenant, I'd like to explain. Then there's the small issue of last night's events, Carrie. Would you mind telling me what you were doing in the middle of a crash sting operation? Sir, I received a telephone call from a possible informant. I set up a meeting. I walked into an ambush. So it would seem, Carrie, so it would seem. However, your tete a tete cost the department thousands of dollars and months of work. Crash has been undercover for months on that operation. They were a fly's hair away from busting a gun running ring wide open. With your help, the only catch they made was that local punk, Spiff. Luckily for you, your informant, what's his name, Emo? What kind of name is that? Has turned into a little songbird. Emo's sitting pretty in the hospital, singing how Spiff's the one who killed the Washington boy. Emo contends that Spiff wanted the boy to deliver guns to gang members and he wouldn't do it. The only redeeming aspect of this whole affair is that Hickman's gun was found in Spiff's apartment when they entered under warrant. SID is running ballistics on Spiff's gun to see if they match the slugs taken from the dead boy. And speaking of SID, they've run ballistics on your firearms and they're ready to be picked up. The police commission's gonna wanna know where and into whom your bullets went last night. These tests are vital. Check with Chester before you head out. Thank you, Lieutenant. Sir, it would appear to me that if Spiff is found to be connected to the Washington boy's murder, might not he also be connected to Bob's? It doesn't work that way, Carrie. While you were out being a cowboy, another body showed. The ammo is similar, very similar. Again, it's one of our own. His name is Rene Garcia. Worked out of Hollenbeck. Garcia's body was found on the front lawn of a singer. What do they call those guys? Rappers? By the name of Yo Money. Must be some big star. I'm getting static from upstairs. Anyways, Garcia was found by this money man's bodyguard. He was walking a lady to her car that had been there for a party about 4 a.m. I want you to get over there and see what's going on. And remember, Carrie, no cowboy tricks. Just try and be nice, okay? Lieutenant. Carrie, you have your assignment. Go out and find yourself a killer. This might be California, Carrie, but I'm not into touchy-feely encounters. Knock that crap off. Yeah? You can just drop dead. Goddamn broads. Hey, Junior, 
That was quite a shootout last night. Heard all about it. You're goddamn lucky one of those punks didn't blow your head off. Want you to listen up, Junior. Playing cowboy only takes you so far in this damn job. If you want to make it as long as I have, you're gonna have to curb your appetite for action. You hear me, Junior? You're just goddamn lucky you weren't killed. You complete a 3.14 documenting the gunfight and the players involved in the ambush. Here you go, Hal. Sure, Junior. Hal, what have you heard about the retrieval of Hickman's gun? They found the damn thing under that punk Spiff's flea-bitten mattress. SID's running ballistics as we speak, Junior. It was quite a shootout, Hal. They had automatic weapons. Damn right they did, Junior. That's their gun of choice nowadays. Hell, we ain't hardly got a fighting chance against those gangsters. You know, Junior, the big boys are gonna be wanting to talk to you about this. You might just think about talking to one of the shrinks first. You know? Get it all in perspective. My guns were taken last night to have ballistics run, so in case there is an inquiry, the big guys will know where my bullets went. Uh, you gotta love the force, Junior. They're looking out for you. And you remember, you get nightmares, you gotta see one of them shrinks. You're just damn lucky you made it out alive, kid. Damn lucky. You call the elevator. You select the basement as your destination. Detective, here to pick up your firearms? They're all ready. Thanks, Chester. I appreciate it. You know, Detective, Nobles and I are heading over to the shortstop tonight for a beer. Would you care to join us? Are you asking me out on a date, Chester? Not in your wildest dreams, Detective. What did you discover about the spent ammo I turned into property yesterday, Chester? They match the slugs taken out of the Washington youth. They don't match with Hickman's ballistics test on file. Chester, are you running ballistics on Spiff's gun? Yes, I am. It looks promising as it's a 9mm and it has a high-capacity magazine. Were you able to find anything out about the glue you sampled? Yes, Detective. It is an industrial strength glue which shares properties with the glue found on Hickman's eyes. The problem with tracing the glue is that it's sold all over the city, not just where you found it. We use the same brand here at Parker Center. Chester, have you processed Garcia's body fluids? They're in the process, Detective. We don't have any results back yet. Don't forget the shortstop tonight, Detective. Pressing the button, you call the elevator. Select the lobby as your desk.
destination. The door has been locked and sealed by crash. The door is locked, the operation closed down. The operation has been shut down. The door is locked. Hello, how are you today? Business not good, slow. Customers afraid to come out of houses, but good. I'd like to ask you. No more talk. This is business. Buy or go. Mrs. Bernadette Washington, mother of Bobby and Lysandra. Hello, Mrs. Washington. Detective Carey, hello. How are you today, Mrs. Washington? A little down, Detective. I don't need your comfort, sir. Lysandra appears to be adjusting to her brother's absence. Children don't usually like being touched by non-family members. Hello, Lysandra. Do you want to know a secret? I see a real pretty lady in the alley. I seen her when my brother was dead. What was this lady doing, Lysandra? She was smoking. Lysandra, what did this lady look like? She was pretty. And she had pretty clothes. What was she wearing, Lysandra? A pretty red dress. The information about the woman in red might be important, if it's true. With the amount of violence in this neighborhood, maybe all the children should be issued Kevlar vests. We use paste at school. Some of the kids eat paste. Yeah! We might be poor, Detective, but we don't take handouts. You know better than to give a child a clip of live ammo. Thank you, Detective, but my daughter and I don't take charity. Have you lost your senses? That's a prescription drug, Carrie. I don't 
don't know how to drive. You're teasing me. That's a good picture of you. I don't know how to read too good yet. I'm going to get better this year in school. Detective, my daughter and I appreciate your offer, but we don't take handouts. Detective, Lysandra doesn't need your flashlight. She has her own toys. Mrs. Washington, if there's anything the department or I can do, please call. There's nothing anybody can do. Nobody can bring my son home. You turn the knob and open the door, Detective. Howdy, cowboy. Heard about it last night. Quite a gunfight. You fill the form out according to department specifications. Filled out and ready to go, Bert. Thank you, partner. Thank you, partner. You pick up the headgear. Officers, take your field positions, please. All firearms to low ready. Hey there, partner. You better learn to duck and cover with a score like you got today. Thank you, partner. Entering the morgue always provides a sense of anticipation. Hi, Detective Carey. No time to say hello, Detective Carey? Wow, you must be real busy. You can go on in, Detective Carey. Sometimes, Detective, I sing in the car. I just love your suit. 
Did you know that I can gargle and sing at the same time? I think of water as my friend because there's so much you can do with it. You can boil it and freeze it. You drink it and wash with it. Water's really wonderful. Someday, I'm going to visit a foreign country. I hear Hawaii is really nice. I can count backwards from 100. It's kind of hard though. Did you know that once I sang the Star Spangled Banner in a talent contest? Well, I did. Sometimes I like to sleep standing up and pretend I'm a horse. Someday I'd like to be a movie star. Wouldn't that be fun? You know, sometimes I wish I was an astronaut. I always get confused if there's 48 or 50 states in America, and then there's Guam. I don't get Guam. Detective Carey, did you know that Russell Marks gets all his corny jokes from Cynthia Joseph? It's really hilarious. You know, Detective Carey, I have a hangnail. It's really awful. Hello, Detective Carey. Do you know why the mechanic didn't buy the battery? What is it you're trying to say? I don't know. Because he got sticker shock. <laughs> Go right in, detective. Hello, John. John, why don't you join Chester and me at the shortstop tonight? I'll buy you a cold one. You look like you could use it. Thanks, Sam. It sounds good. I'll try and make it. The climate on the streets dictates that you wear such an item. Sam, I purchased this glue in a store near to where Hickman was found. Do you think it could have relevance? I don't think so, John. That brand of glue is in every store around town. Sam, what do you make of these? I found them at Bob's. Well, John, many people feel the need to buffer life's problems. If you're suggesting that these might have contributed to Bob's death, well, I'm here to tell you that the dosage is much too small. Sam, what can you tell me about Garcia? Just about anything you want to know pertaining to how he was killed, the who and the why are up to you. Has the autopsy been performed? Yes, it has, John. Garcia was tortured the same as Hickman. Injection marks in the upper left arm, irregular cigarette burns to the face and upper torso, missing extremities, this time toes. Glued orifice, this time the mouth, and a ruptured gastrointestinal lining. Your killer is getting more brazen, John. Garcia was able to watch as he was tortured. He could not utter a sound, but he could witness his slow death. In your opinion, Sam, what's the cause of death? I have to believe it's poison, although there are none of the telltale signs one expects to find, such as colored sputum, vomit, or odor. We might be dealing with something we do not yet have a test for. Was there lividity on Garcia? Yes. Once again, there was primary and secondary lividity. Primary was located on the buttocks, secondary on the upper back and shoulders. I would venture to say that Garcia was tortured and killed while sitting up, left for a while, and then moved. Your killer has transportation, John. He could strike anywhere. Sam, what are the distinguishing physical marks? The body had restraint marks on the wrists and ankles. I was able to lift fibers from these areas. I sent them over to SID for analysis. There were bruises behind the shoulder blades that lead me to believe Garcia's arms were tied over his head. 
How about a toxicology report, Sam? Body fluids were taken and sent to SID. They're running every poison test known to the scientific community. The burn marks, they're consistent with a cigarette burn? Yes. I was able to lift ash samples out of the burned skin. I sent them to SID for analysis. What about fibers or hairs, Sam? As with Hickman, there were fibers at restraint points. However, I found additional fibers and ash in the hair. The fibers were red, and I would venture to say the ash came from cigarettes. Both samples have been sent to SID for analysis. Is there anything else, Sam? Well, yes. Neither Hickman nor Garcia had food residue left in what once was their stomachs. That's rare, there's almost always residue. I might mention to you that Garcia's mother came down to claim the body and pick up any personal effects. Apparently no one had mentioned that her son was found naked. When I told her, and that consequently there were no personal effects to speak of, she went ballistic. A word of warning, John, I think she's gunning for you next. Open the door and head to the lobby. Goodbye, and have a nice day, Detective Carey.